We're trying to figure out exactly the relationship between Italy and the euro. Yes. So depending on what happens, and there's about a million possibilities at the moment of coalitions, grand coalitions, or anything in between, does the Italian person want the euro? Is there a danger that Italy will leave the eurozone? I don't see that danger, honestly. It is true that some of the parties, the Five Star, the League uh, have uh, loudly played in the past with the idea of either leaving the Euro or giving a chance through a referendum to the Italian people to express themselves on this. But this has uh, quickly come back into forgetfulness uh, after the Le Pen defeat in France. Um, I think most Italian people have gone down a bit as to their love for the EU. In the past we were one of the most uh, EU-loving uh, populations in Europe, but still uh, may diverge intellectually on what the benefits of the, EU, of the Euro are, but I think most people see that it would really be a jump into darkness to leave the euro. So what does that mean? There are parties that are eurosceptic by nature, but th there's not leaving the euro in any of the platforms. If there was a coalition with one of these parties that by history wasn't in love with the euro, would it represent a risk or not? It would represent a risk uh, further down the road. In particular, we should not forget that uh, in uh, May 2019, there will be in Italy, like everywhere where else in the EU, the elections for the European Parliament. So that is another huge debate where the European issues uh, uh, will have to come to the forefront of the debate. And then whatever government there will have been in the meantime, uh, maybe even a grand coalition, including maybe the League, there might be tensions within that coalition between the more orthodox parties on Europe and uh, the League, which might, in that case, all of a sudden feel uh, an attraction that now it does not feel to combine with the Five Star Movement in government. Also, probably they will not have the number anyway, but they might be tempted at that point to join forces with the Five Star Movement in, in the opposition ahead of the European elections. Um, there's been talk about one of the parties masterminded by Silvio Berlusconi offering a 23% flat tax. Is that possible? Will, will he go through with it? I believe not. I believe not. Uh, there are several parties uh, playing with this idea, which, uh, however, would uh, would have to be combined with uh, other so far unmentioned uh, elements in order to achieve at least a minimum of uh, social justice through the tax system. Uh, and so I think this will remain one of the many unfulfilled promises about which, however, Italians uh, tend to forget uh, rather quickly, uh, a bit too quickly uh, for my taste. Um, Senator Monti, when you look at the recovery, if you look at the hard economic data, unemployment has gone down, GDP has gone up, but you would feel or you would look at a country that feels a little bit better about their economic prospect. And then walking around in Rome, you can feel anxiousness. Is it because the recovery hasn't touched all social classes or is it a north-south divide? These two things, plus the size of the recovery, which uh, luckily is there, uh, but is uh, one of the smallest uh, in the EU. And this follows difficult years of recession. And at any rate, if we take the broader view, in the last 20 years or so, the rate of growth of GDP in Italy has been about half that of the Eurozone. And what strikes me very much is that in this electoral debate, there has been a lot of outbidding among parties in uh, who promises most in terms of lower taxes or greater public expenditure, but not really anyone sketching out a project to take Italy out of this trap which limits its growth so, so much. In other words, there, haven't, there hasn't been one party 
which has uh, made use of that window of opportunity that Emmanuel Macron used in France, where he did not make promises about uh, uh, France uh, giving out things to its citizens, but asked for sacrifices in order to put the structural reforms uh, uh, in place for the good of France in the future. Now this is the strength of Macron, because he can say to his people, look, you elected me for this. Nobody will have that strength in Italy. Um, what does an America first policy from the Trump administration mean for Italy? This is a country that exports a lot. Yesterday we had tariffs on steel. We had tariffs on aluminium. Is this much more difficult for Italy than other European countries? It is a perverse effect because the mere fact that President Trump speaks of America first encourages some in Italy, particularly those who don't love too much the EU, to speak of Italy first as that was a plausible comparison with America first. Whereas one in Europe should understand that, if anything, the equivalent of America first would be Europe first, but not any individual country first. So there is a perverse uh, effect uh, of uh, somewhat ridiculous isolationism in a country which uh, certainly, I believe that not even the US will be able to be first unless it is in an open and global and governed context let alone Italy.